Having followed Bitcoin since it was $3 in 2011, we've had many, many all-time high celebrations. Breaking $10 was a small celebration. And I remember I was at the pool bar in Acapulco when it hit $100. Told ya, 100 baby, 100. And when it broke $1,000, I was at another bar in Acapulco. After $1,000, Dollar Vigilante subscribers were heard around the world buying sports cars and yachts. But with Bitcoin breaking above $1,325 today, to hit an all-time high of $1,331.31 on the Bitcoin price index, this is a memorable one. The previous all-time high, which was set on March 10th amid expectations that the Winklevoss ETF proposal coin may have been approved by the SEC, pushed Bitcoin up to $1,325.81. After coin's rejection by the corrupt central planning agency, Bitcoin's price subsequently dipped around 25%. If you recall, the SEC found that the proposed fund was too susceptible to fraud due to the unregulated nature of Bitcoin. It is, of course, because of its unregulated nature that Bitcoin is so sought after. People like to keep their money out of the reach of thieving government hands and prying eyes. Not to mention, there's no better regulation than the blockchain itself, which is perfect, transparent, and incorruptible, nearly the exact opposite of the SEC. A few weeks after the Winklevoss rejection, there was some hype that the SEC was going to approve a different Bitcoin ETF proposal by Solidex, set to list on the NYSE ARCA exchange. As a result, Bitcoin surpassed the price of gold in US dollars. This too was rejected and caused Bitcoin's price to fall thereafter. However, the currency has since recovered those losses in this upswing, which could be attributed in part to the recent SEC revelation stating that it will be reviewing the petition submitted by the BATS BCX exchange, challenging the ETF rejection decision. The SEC stated that between now and May 15th, they will allow their review to be commented upon. Another component of Bitcoin's price increase could be a result of increasing bank pressures on major exchanges. The Bitfinex exchange, in particular, has been under pressure as it has been unable to process outbound wire transfers from the banks it works with in Taiwan. Since Bitfinex has close ties to other exchanges, many think its difficulties may represent a systemic exchange risk. Also, China's central bank is still borrowing Bitcoin and Litecoin withdrawals from major Chinese exchanges, which has tied up capital and is therefore limiting the supply of coins available for trading and probably driving the price higher. With governments bankrupt and sticky-fingered, it's no wonder that Bitcoin isn't the only cryptocurrency making new highs. Ethereum has also broken out above $60, breaking a new record. We featured it to Dollar Vigilante subscribers just over a year ago near $2. And we featured Dash near $17 two months ago, and it currently trades near $80. In the last few months, it appears that many financial advisories similar to the dollar vigilante, but way behind the curve, have started featuring Bitcoin to their subscribers. This also is likely driving the price of Bitcoin higher, as they finally get on the bandwagon that we started and our subscribers have been on since 2011. And more bullish for Bitcoin, it's rising in price while Bitcoin remains mired in a scaling debate that has pushed a lot of investors to the sidelines. It's still not too late to get into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but you'll want to get the best analysis and information on the space in order to know when to take some profits or buy more. And we've been doing that since 2011. You can sign up at dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. And to find out more on Bitcoin and the massive potential it has, click in the notes below. For anarcho-capitalists, Bitcoin is as good as it gets. It's a deflationary, non-fiat currency, uncontrollable by central banks. Plus, it's also a banking system in and of itself. As Barack Drone Bomber said last year, Bitcoin is like having a Swiss bank account in your pocket. Of course, he meant that like it was a bad thing that needs to be destroyed. The great part is that he, nor Trump, nor any other sociopath can destroy Bitcoin, and that is why it's actually better than a Swiss bank account. And on top of being the best currency and infinitely better than the current banking system, it's also a transaction system, like Visa or MasterCard, without most of the fees. And if all that isn't good enough, Bitcoin holds the potential to disrupt and destroy central banks and government completely. Is it any wonder we love it? Next stop, $10,000.